is she doing? I hear you say. She doesn't normally dig over her beds. <laughs> Morning. Uh, I'm not actually digging over the bed. This is the last one of our original raised beds and the corner has rotted out. And as the corner's rotted out, the soil has kind of just shifted across and it's pushing this edge out. So I'm just digging out the soil away so that I can refix the side of this bed back up again. I can't screw the bracket back in on this edge because like I say, it's rotten. So what I'm gonna use are these uh, shelving racking brackets, you know, that just screw onto the wall and then you've got like the clips for the shelves to go on. I've got masses of these that we found on the plot. And so I'm gonna use them just to hammer down. So hold the edge of the bed up, hammer them down, to keep it in place. The reason that I'm getting this bed all prepped is because this is where we're gonna be growing the overspill of tomatoes. So I have got so many varieties of tomatoes to try out this year. There's no way we can fit them all into the polytunnel we've got. So I'm gonna turn this bed into like a poly bed or like a tomato house. <laughs> that is the idea anyway. So I just wanted to get this all kind of sorted and ready to go for when I start building that out. Haven't even sown the tomatoes yet. Uh, that's something I'm gonna be doing next week. You heard me next week. It's tomato sowing week. I'm pretty excited. But it's such a grey day today. We've just come up to kind of sort this out. And also I've brought the strimmer with me. I just want to strim around the edges of the fruit trees because I've weeded them all and all the bulbs are coming up and they look so fantastic. But the edges are all messy. So <laughs> that's all I've come up here to do today. Do the bed, sort the edges of the fruit trees around and then I'm going to go to the pub. OK, let's blitz those circles. Get them looking tidy. Well, if they're going to be soft in the middle, we may as well take them and see what we can find. That, oh no, see? Yeah, take it though, because there's no point leaving it in. These ones, were, these ones were on the outside, you see, of the cover. Right. So, um, decent ones. Two came out, but they're, they, see, they're all right, the ones that were under cover. Mm -hmm. I think that's enough. I just want to. Do you want that one? Not bad, does it? Yeah. They're the coloured ones, I think. Right, that's it. That'll do me. Is that a weed in there? That's what I'm looking after. Yeah, so the one, yeah, so all the ones that were under this were okay. And the others were just a bit soft on the top. Right. Okay. Let's go.
your gorgeousnesses. Yeah. Are you ready? Are you ready to come out, girlies? beautiful day again up here actually today is the only day that I've got like a solid amount of time that I can be up here and we have lucked out with the weather it's perfect blue skies it's really lovely the birds are going wild we've had like what four five days of like quite solid grey this morning it's blue skies and the birds are like bam 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 chatter 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 <laughs> it's beautiful um so one other marvellous issue for this week is I've hurt my back so um, I've got a couple of jobs I need to do I need to do the gooseberries I need to prune the gooseberries and I also need to pot up the onions but if I'm walking a bit strangely and my movements are a bit odd that's what it is <laughs> yes a bit of a bit of a non-moving person at the moment we were going to go and pick up compost this morning from it's Sunday and the little shop at the allotment around the corner is open on Sunday mornings um, but there's no way I can be carting the compost around today. So it's gonna to have to wait till next week. But yeah, so I think gooseberries are gonna be first on the list. So wish me luck, lacerations ensuing, I'm sure. We're gonna have a bit of an issue with the sunshine here because it's absolutely glaringly bright and marvelous, but not very good for the camera. <laughs> but yeah, so this is the thorns on the gooseberry. They are just so vicious pointing backwards so that they get you at every possible opportunity is that going to focus no it's just going to stab me instead yeah they are really nasty um so what i'm going to do is you know these are my fan trained ones firstly i'm going to take everything off that's sticking out this side which mum will be really pleased about because every time she walks past she gets too close and gets attached <laughs> So I'm going to take them off first and then the next thing that I'm going to do is work from the inside of the fruit cage and just choose the branches that I want to keep and splay them against the back. A bit like I did last year, except that there's a lot more to work with this year because last year it was the first year they were in. So we've got some really quite big thick stems in there. Uh, so I might be able to get quite a good like, shape going, which we'll then be able to keep year on year. So... I better go and get some mighty gloves and some secateurs. As I'm pruning these back, I'm gonna put them straight into a bag uh, to take to the dump or to the um, refuse at the dump, which they do like green matter. Sorry, you're slipping out of my hands. <laughs> uh, where they do the green matter waste because I'm not gonna put them in our own compost because they don't break down and all you're doing is booby trapping the compost for next year when you're rifling through it and you get thorns in your hands. So. And we don't have um, any kind of like woody waste like collection here. So we just, I'm just going to bag them up and take them to the woody waste at the dump. Um, yeah, so they're not just going to go in the rubbish. They will be composted down or chipped or whatever they do with them there. But we're just not going to do it here because um, too vicious, too vicious. Right, gloves is what I need. Gloves, secateurs and a bag. I've got four gooseberry plants along this little edge of the fruit cage. I've got two red and two green or white, I think they're called, but the green basically. 
yeah so there's four plants across here and I've decided to grow them in a kind of fan shape up against the edge of the fruit cage purely because firstly it saves space but also it's easier to pick them when you don't have to put your hands deep inside the hell fire of a gooseberry bush. You can just kind of, they're all laid out there flat for you. <laughs> that is the idea. But if you're pruning a gooseberry bush, which is just a bush shape, they always say goblet. Like, doesn't matter whether it's red currants or what, they always go on about goblet shape. And all it means is just keeping it open and airy in the centre and nice wide stems, you know, that kind of shape. But that's not really relevant for what I'm doing here. So I'm just picking the best stems which are going to splay really nicely backwards against the edge of the fruit cage. So like some of these ones will bend back really perfectly. Some of those ones that are sticking right out of the front, I've got no chance of splaying them back. So they will all come off and then the ones up the centre will be pinned back. Now, I, I know it looks like I've chucked spaghetti all over this. <laughs> I haven't. We had masses of nasturtiums up here and this is the remnants of them. So yeah, it's a bit difficult to see. It looks sort of like a spaghetti mangrove. I'll be trying to pull some of that out as I'm going. But general rule with the gooseberries is the thirds rule, uh, which is pretty easy. You take generally the top growth, like the whole shape of the thing, you take the whole lot down by a third. So a third of the height just off immediately, which is easy to remember. The second one is taking a third out of the old growth every year. So the most productive stems, like fruit wise for your gooseberry, are going to be about two, three years old. By the time they get to four or five years old, the productivity really drops off and you just don't get any fruit on those stems. So by taking a third of the oldest wood out of the centre of your gooseberry each time, the idea is that you're generally maximising your two to three year old stems. That's the idea. With these particular gooseberries, none of their stems are four to five years old because I only planted them in here, what, two years ago? Uh, winter two years ago, yeah. So they've actually only had one year of fruiting. So I don't need to take out any of the old wood of this. All I'm doing is shaping, getting a nice splay across the back. That's the aim of the game. I realise actually this is really difficult to see on the camera. So I'm just thinking I might be able to use the black like shade from the swing seat uh, so that you can see this a bit better. Hopefully that's gonna make it a little bit more easier for you um, because otherwise I'm just basically pruning invisibility. <laughs> Great telly, Jesse. Great telly. <laughs> Gooseberries, right, fab. Uh, there looks like there's more stems up there than there is because I haven't quite cleared uh, the spaghetti fiasco entirely. Um, but maybe they are a bit crowded. But because they're flat, I think it's going to be all right. <laughs> and I really am looking forward to gooseberry ice cream. Next on the agenda. 
Mitchell, do you want me to stir it while you um Okay, right, we're good. Where are we going to go? Well, you can't sit down, so I'd clear the spot over there because you Right, while we sit here and enjoy this hot chocolate, I'm going to show you what we got up to yesterday. Good afternoon. Uh, Mum and I are at Kew Gardens. We've nipped over here, actually, because there is uh, something flowering. Well, it's a false banana uh, is flowering at the moment, and it only flowers once. Uh, it grows up like a big banana palm, although it's not a banana. It's a big banana palm type plant, and then it produces this one massive, massive flower, and then it dies. Oh, Mum! Hello, Robin! Hello, you found a tropical paradise for a Robin. Hey! out, hasn't he? <laughs> Sorry, Robin distractions. Yeah, I was just saying, somewhere in here in the temperate house, the false banana is flowering now. Uh, so we're going to go and see if we can find it. I am going to try and not get too distracted by too much, but how beautiful is this? I don't actually even know what it is. Spamania Africana. God, that's beautiful. Haha, <laughs> something I do know what it is. Look at the size of this money plant. My word. It's flowering though. Ours is flowering in the conservatory. Not quite as big as this though. Oh no, in the atrium they've got loads of pots of paper whites. Ugh. No, you see, because these smell, to some people, the paper whites smell unbelievably incredible and they're beautiful. To me, it smells like stale urine. It's the only one of all those really highly scented narcs, but God, when we had them in the shop, they used to make me gag. There are some stunning salvias in here though. Look at the size of these leaves. They're so soft. Oops. Moving on. Here we have mum in her natural habitat. <laughs> They're stunning. the blue lily pilly <laughs> yeah sorry we are still on the hunt for the false banana but i just had to show you this lemon tree look at the size of it it is magnificent and it's making me feel really terrible because our lemon tree we left it outside in the frost forgot to cover it or anything and it's not looking so hot <laughs> i'll show you when we get home but it's not looking great like a dinosaur is exciting <laughs> these are one of my favorite things in the temperate house these they're like ebony ferns they're it's just magnificent they're rock hard and almost completely black just about to unfurl it's almost like an insect they are just magnificent look at that Wah. okay we'll go back there <laughs> look at this it looks amazing it's like red eggs like like an egg tomato oh yeah tamarillo tree tomato <laughs> aptly named so where's this banana thing hey mum mum's already been to see this thing once and she cannot remember where it is <laughs> so we're just walking around in circles at the moment I 
Oh yes. Here we go. So blue carpet. It is. Oh, it's magnificent though. So this is what we've come here to see. I don't know if you can see that very well. It is so dark, but it's it's a red colour rather than black like it looks on the camera. And this whole plant here, once it's flowered, will die. It's quite an interesting plant actually because this fleshy bottom bit um, is edible. It's um, fermented, I think, and then eaten. And also it's got edible roots, like a big corm underneath that uh, is also edible. This is pretty good. But yeah, this beautiful, beautiful plant is having a bit of a last gasp flower and then it will die. It's huge. It's absolutely huge. I stand right underneath, so I'm blocking some of the light. Can you see that better? Yeah, can you see the structure in there? It's really beautiful. Look. Hello, little sausage. Okay, we've escaped the temperate house. That was quite an impressive flower though, wasn't it? We are going to go and have a quick look up the tree walk. Seems there's no leaves on the trees. See what it looks like uh, bare. And then uh, we're obviously not going to leave before we've headed over and had a look in the vegetable garden. Yes. It's looking barren in here. Look at that. I mean, there's labels. This does say broad beans, but all the broad beans are dead. <laughs> and uh, their peas are dead. Wow. Well, it's nice to know we're not the only ones that got hit. Look at these incredibly poor looking kale. <laughs> yeah, there's barely a sausage here. Wow, I don't think I've ever seen it look this barren in winter. Seriously. But this, I'm sorry, how beautiful are these? After my um, very haphazard gooseberry training, look at the beauty of that concentric circle apple trees. <laughs> wow, puts you to shame, doesn't it? But yeah, normally all their perennial stuff is still going strong. They've normally got tons of brassicas. 
Even the artichokes have died down and everything. Wow, the walking onions are still going. <laughs> I've been thinking about growing these walking onions and I asked Steve the other day, uh, Greenside Up Steve, and he was just like, no, they're a waste of time, don't bother. <laughs> so I've crossed them off my list. Samphire is just uh, a crisp. Oh dear. But what is new is there's a whole mushroom area. So this is a grey oyster bed. Ooh. But yeah, I really think they've had a lot of digging. Velvet shanks. Shiitake. Shiitake. Oh, there's lion's mane. That's the one we grew. Yes. These ones take, can take years, can't they, when you draw the hole in the Yeah, when you're not that a they Yes. Ah, look, something that survived. Isn't that beautiful? It's a Brussels sprout. The leaves on the, the top leaves are just look gorgeous, don't they? I just want to eat them. These don't look very impressive, no. though. <laughs> and this looks very sad. Purple sprouting. Has got a bit of purple sprouting on it, but... You can smell that smell as well, yeah. the, the rotting brassica. Whatever this chap is doesn't look too hot. Who's he? Uh, asparagus kale. Nope, not looking good. There is a whole bed of parsnips here though. Quite impressive. Spinach. This spinach looks fantastic. Mine looks terrible. Giant winter. Might make a note of that one because uh, the spinach I had outside has not coped. And this chaps, do you remember me talking about this last year, Minutina? I have got to get hold of some seeds for Minutina because this was one of the ones that Johanna grew and it was delicious. And we thought it was Mizuna for ages, but found out it wasn't, it was Minutina. Must look for some seeds for that. Right, we're gonna head over to the shop, I think. See if we can pick up any goodies. I did say before that mum had already been to see that false banana and she said that they had some uh, wild garlic bulbs here in the shop. So we're gonna try and pick up some of them if they've still got them. And they have. This one's got quite a lot in. Well, think? I think for a tenner, yeah. it's not the end of the world, no. is it? We'll give it a go. But I think the one you've got there is a good one. Yeah. And, yeah, um, yeah so go with that one. And then, Take that. yeah. That looks pretty good. I think go under that tree somewhere and then try and establish a Oh, the seed section. <laughs> they know how to catch you right when you come through the doors. But I don't actually need any seed. The only thing I'm looking out for is Minutina, and I don't think they're going to have that here. So I'm just going to take a deep breath and walk on past. Although I have been got by the dahlias. <laughs> just been having a bit of a nose around here. They've got some quite interesting things. But what they do have is Wine Eyed Jill, which is one of the ones I've been looking for. So considering it's already on my list, I feel I can justify taking this home with me. Look at this, I'm just walking past the book bit, but look, Prue Leith, Bliss on Toast. Okay, we have seen the false banana. We've picked up some wild garlic bulbs. I think that was an afternoon well spent. So I'm gonna pot up those onions. Yes. We've got, what's the, what's the temperatures looking like over the next couple of days? Let me get them. Yeah, six, six and five, not more. Righty-ho, hot chocolate has been successfully had. Uh, I'm going to sow, I'm not going to sow, I'm going to plant some onion sets. Um, these are the Pink Panther, one second. The Pink Panther onions. So... These, uh, we've never had great success with onions from sets. Uh, in fact, we've never had great success with onions, to be honest. We do pretty well with shallots from seed, particularly Zebrun. Fantastic, as long as we can avoid the white rot. But you might remember that I've got a whole bed of onions from sets because of the excess ones that Johanna ordered. I just thought we may as well get them in. Um, they were three varieties. It was electric, which is a brown onion, Snowball, which is a white onion, and then Radar, which is a red onion. I've subsequently been told that uh, Radar from Sets is a complete waste of time and it just bolts. <laughs> but anyway, that's what we've got in that bed. But I put it really wide spacing 
um, thinking that we might be able to get some other stuff in there, even if it's just radishes between the rows. But what's actually ended up happening is that loads of them have been nicked. So I planted them as sets and then they've just been hoiked out. We found a couple on the surface and I replanted them. But now that they're about this height, in fact, I'll just take you outside and show you. But yeah, now that they're sort of coming up and you can really see where what and what has come up, uh, there's large gaps, <laughs> really large gaps where they've just all been hoiked. But yes, so along with those ones, I don't know if you remember also Onion and Johanna related is when we were in Bath last year. Oh, look, there's mum. <laughs> when we were in Bath last year, we went to that really fantastic garden centre that had all the potatoes and had loads and loads of different onions in there that I'd never heard of. And I was particularly excited about this one being called Pink Panther. And I thought I must have a go with it and turned out to be fantastic little onions. They're pink. <laughs> surprise isn't it um they're pink and they're quite small i don't know if they're meant to be quite small but from the picture they look like exactly what we got out of the ground basically they were beautiful and so sweet and not infested with all the things that our onions are normally infested with <laughs> you're right there mum <laughs> it's all right i'm gonna pop them up in here I was going to do it out there, but uh, Lily's now taken to living to sleeping out there. So I'm just going to do them in here. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, yeah, so basically great onion uh, and we're going to find out if it was fluke or not. I am going to start them in pots though, because we had them all hoiked out of that bed. Um, I'm going to start them in pots a bit like I did with the garlic, not for any other reason than just to get them started before I put them out. I think they'll have a better chance. And so we're going to infill a lot of the gaps that we've got in that bed. That's the plan, I'm gonna pop them up. Same old, same old, square pots, bit of compost. Marvellous. God, it's beautiful and warm in here. Actually, it's lovely everywhere today. It's so lovely outside. That, um, mum and I are just having that hot, hot chocolate outside. That's the first time since, must be November, that we've been able to just sit down outside for an extended period of time and not be cold. You know, even when we've had those really beautiful, beautiful sunny days, when, but it's been really, really cold. Today, it's just lovely. It's just lovely. How lovely. <laughs> Pink Panther onions. <laughs> So yeah, it's really quite all go on the allium front. Um, we've got uh, the ones I've just planted up there, the um, pink panther. We've got three different varieties of onion in this bed down here. We've got shallots coming along really nicely in the troughs outside the greenhouse. They're looking really quite lush and they are splitting down here. See, lots of little da 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 da's. Fantastico. And then we've got the garlic that we've just potted up into the troughs in the greenhouse. So yeah, all in all, for somebody who said last year, oh, I'm not gonna grow alliums again. It's going well. 
What we do also have today is I brought the garlic that we picked up at Kew Gardens. Now I know this is an incredibly expensive way of <laughs> getting wild garlic and I know someone's going to tell me don't plant it because it's going to be a menace. Well, I don't mind it being a menace. We're planting it down here in the, like, the little woodland garden and yeah. I know, I know it's an incredibly expensive way of buying wild garlic and especially seems in the woods like up that way there's just masses of it growing but I don't want to go in there and, and dig it up that's kind of that's in the woodland I don't want to disturb it and I'm all right with the tenor let's just see if it works right let's get them in and then we've got to pick some cavalanero and then I think we're probably going to head off this is the little bed in question that you will remember um, the arctic bells are stunningly beautiful aren't they girlies yep I think they're the most beautiful bulbs. I just think they're so lovely. And at this time of year, flowering away, gorgeous, aren't they girls, huh? But yeah, this is the bed I'm gonna get, try and get the wild garlic established in. We've got some garlic chives in that corner and we've got mint in here as well. So we're not afraid of domineering bits and pieces in here. But actually we're trying to get wild garlic down here. I have tried to establish three cornered leeks, which we've got up here. So this is the back end of our allotment site. This is where all the badgers are. <laughs> oh, sorry. Hope nobody's got epilepsy. That's strobe lighting practically coming through that fence. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, but up this side, actually, I don't know if it's still a bit too early for it. Is that coming through there? This is it. So we have got mass, like carpets of three cornered leeks up this end of the allotment site. And I have dug some of these up before and tried to establish them down our end, but it hasn't worked. So I'm hoping we're going to have three cornered leeks at this end and wild garlic at our end. But yeah, the badger sets are mahoosive down this side. So yeah, there are so many different types of um, wild alliums out there, kind of forageable alliums, I suppose you would call them. But I think supposedly, I have been told, uh, that all alliums are essentially edible. But they do obviously all taste quite different. And the common ones that we get round here are the wild garlic, which is also called ransoms, in case I'm confusing anybody. So ransoms and wild garlic are the same thing. They have very wide, flat leaves and their flowers are white and upright. Still clearly allium flowers, but they're upright. Whereas the three-cornered leek has got very narrow strap leaves, um, more like a native bluebell, that kind of leaf. And it has three flowers and they hang downwards and they're lime green. They taste really quite different from the wild garlic, the ransoms. There is also onion grass, which I've seen growing in the common um, that's just on the other side of the river from ours. Again, tastes quite different. And what I might try and do is when all these bits and pieces are out, I might try and get them all together in one place so we can do a comparison and a bit of a taste test and see. So that would be quite nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, I'm planting both of these wild garlics right at the back or quite close to the back of this bed because it's under the oak tree. What tends to happen is in, if anything does naturalise or starts spreading, it tends to spread by running forward, you know, towards the curve of the bed because that's where the light is. So I'm starting these chaps off quite far back, thinking that if they do take, they'll be coming forward. One of the advantages of this bed for introducing quite invasive things like the wild garlic, like the mint, is that there's nothing else around it. It's all just mowable, strimmable lawn, so really easy to control. Wild garlic in place. Hey, <laughs> girly whirlies. Are you watching me? <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, I'm really pleased about that. Please take wild garlic. Please take. Look at that sky. Still not a cloud in it. It's incredible. What a beautiful day. Righty-ho, gonna pick some Cavalanero uh, before we head home. These are just about the only brassicas we've got, which are, I was gonna say not looking sad, but are not dead actually is more, more to the point. <laughs> uh, Cavalanero is just a miracle. I love it. Although I have heard from some people that their Cavalanero got got by the frost. Um, we're just lucky that ours didn't and they're looking brilliant this year. We often have a real problem with a uh, white fly on the Cavalanero, but I think I said a couple of weeks ago that incredibly we just don't seem to have any this year. I don't know what's happening, um, but the Cavalanero is just pristine and beautiful. And not only did the frost not kill it, but it's made it just tender and sweet. 
I mean, I don't think we've it. ever had a more perfect no. Cavalanero. No white fly and scrub them to death before you actually could eat them. <laughs> I mean, look at this stonage. It is, it's so beautiful. <laughs> Get that in the basket to come home. Gorgeousness. What girls? What is it? 1.7, I think we'll stay here. <laughs> We were just about to go home. We've stepped in here because actually it's got a bit chilly outside and uh, yeah, it's boiling in here. It's wonderful. Wonderful. It's beautiful. I'll, I'll reset this though. We'll get the night train one. Oh yeah, good idea. Right. Are you ready to go home? I've got 71 point Fahrenheit. <laughs> I don't know to do that. What if you change the... Um... I've got back to centigrade. Back to centigrade? Yep. Okay, cool. Right, are you ready for home? I'm ready for home, yes. Right, well, we'll see you at home. A nice week it's been I mean obviously apart from the hurt in the back thing <laughs> I didn't actually do anything to it it's an old injury I have a um, protruding disc right at the bottom of my back and uh, sometimes it just goes and that's what happened yeah nothing strenuous and no particular injury just annoying um, but it normally you know sorts itself out fairly quickly so hopefully next week we'll be back to normal Mm. We get quite a lot of bits and pieces done this week. Quite excited about the wild garlic, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but what I'm really excited about is the tomatoes next week. So excited. Yeah, so next week is going to be a bit of a tomato special, going through loads of varieties. So, in um, getting all excited. <laughs> Yeah, I am really, really looking forward to getting them started. And in fact, next week, what I'll also do is um, show you, actually, you can see in the top up there, my lights are going <laughs> uh, on the chilies and the cucumbers. So I'll do an update on all the things we've got so far and the peas that are coming up and the onions that are coming up. Might be worth, actually, maybe next week we'll do a bit of a plot tour as well, because there are there is quite a lot of stuff going on. Um, that I haven't sort of looked at in a while. So maybe we'll do plot tour and tomato special next week. Mm. That sounds good. But yeah, being at Q. Oh, I know what I was going to show you was my flowering money tree that I've got in the conservatory. So here she is in all her glory. This actually was my grandmother's. Uh, so it's pretty blooming old because she hasn't been around for quite a long time. Uh, and then, wow, actually, it must be so old because, yeah, it was my grandmother's. And then our cat Rosie. When we first got her, we had her and her brother, and when they were really tiny kittens, they climbed all up into it and broke all the branches off. And Rosie died when she was 17, about five years ago. <laughs> so yeah, it's not a young, yeah, they broke all the branches off and it was just like a stump, huge stump, but a stump, and it's, it's come back to that. So yeah, and, and my nan had it for God knows how long beforehand because it was huge when the cats broke it to pieces. <laughs> so maybe if we hadn't broken it with cats and uh, ever potted it up, it might have been as big as that one at Kew. Who knows? <laughs> then again, we've got enough trouble keeping that one the size it is, let alone the one that was at Kew. So maybe we made a good choice there. Mm. And the other thing that was Kew related was the lemon tree so that magnificent one they had at Kew, our one, it's not looking so good, is it? So last year we made the mistake of covering it with fleece and then it wasn't that cold and it sweated 
and got very unhappy because it was too hot and not enough light under the fleecy thing. Um, and it really suffered because of that. So then I had to, I don't know why I'm laughing, it's really sad. And we had to chop loads of it back last year because it died. And this year we're gonna have to do the same thing uh, because it was too cold and we didn't put the fleece on. So yeah, we haven't handled that very well, have we? Not at all, not at all, no. But that bottom bit does look like it's going to survive doesn't it it looks pretty healthy tell me i'm right it's going to be fine i'm just going to have to top it you know take the whole of that top bit off but yeah it'll be okay give it a really good feed in the spring it will be fine <laughs> yeah anyway chaps i'm going to say cheers this has probably turned into another long video these videos when i started off they were like 20 minutes weren't they and now they're like creeping up to an hour <laughs> gonna have to do something about that mm. So anyway, cheers to my magnificent patrons. Uh, you'll be watching this Monday evening. Um, and then cheers to everybody else on a Tuesday evening. Yeah, long may this beautiful sunshine continue because the grey was starting to get me down a bit there. Sometimes a grey day is really lovely. You know, like a grey, wet day, fab. But when they go on for sort of more than three in a row, it gets you down a bit, doesn't it? You need a bit more sunshine. But at the moment, the sky is completely clear. I mean, it's getting dark now, but it is still clear. So I've got high hopes for tomorrow. Although clear sky, it's probably going to be very cold tonight, isn't it? Very cold, very cold. Next week, tomatoes, chilli update, plot tour. I'll see you then. Cheers, chaps.